Charles E J O E Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. So what we are getting into right now, getting into another video from the real South Africa from them, that channel. Want to say what's up to them too. I did a reaction to one of their videos and you know, they hit me back, you know, just said thank you and all that to um, reacting to one of their videos. So, you know, it's much love right there. You know, if they see this, what's up y'all? Thank you, you know. But anyways, we with this again, all right? Another South, the real South Africa, we up here with another one. Cause I know how you guys like them. They from America and they came up over there, man, loving it. Anyways, let's check this out, all right? It's called, <laughs> South Africa, the truth about South Africa and the need. To, I can't really see that shit. All right. South Africa, the truth about South Africa and the need to return now. Okay. All right. Let's see what this is. No matter what, man, I want to go out there. That, that's like the main. I want to go out there. My cousin, matter of fact, I think. I heard he's going out to Africa or he just went out there. I don't know for, to what country though. But anyways, let's get into this right here, okay? Let's go, man. Hello everyone, it's Latasha Blanton with The Real South Africa. Thank you so much for subscribing to our, our YouTube channel and watching our videos. We hope to send you more content that is worthy of your attention. The video you're about to see is a conversation that took place with a first time traveler to South Africa. What we've learned is that people have a preconceived notion about what to expect when they get to South Africa. And this professional had a preconceived notion. And this conversation takes you through her journey of how everything- Stop it. My bad, y'all. She thought about South Africa was completely changed within five days. Thank you for watching our videos. Remember to subscribe, share, and we look forward to meeting you in person soon. Thanks so much for watching. God bless. Hello everyone. It's Latasha Blanton with The Real South Africa and today I am with Lynn Trice. Um, Lynn is a new traveler to South Africa and we're just going to have a little conversation about the last five days since she's been here. So Lynn, if you could tell us a little bit about your last five days. Wow, my last five days. It's been so much, um, Tasha, so much is going on. Number one, I think probably the first 48 hours, I had to unload a lot of mental baggage. <laughs> a lot of mental baggage because it's nothing like what they show on the media. Uh, absolutely nothing. Um, my goodness, number one, it's very well developed. Number two, the people are extremely, extremely kind. Uh, there's you do not know how pissed off I was when I just found out just how different it was out there. How she was just saying how developed it is. I was so pissed off because you saw what she was saying, how she didn't know that it was going to be like this. And it, it was the same with, um, it was the same with, um, Leticia, I think that was her name. Um, the lady that's part of this channel. When I saw an interview with her the first time, she did not know what South Africa was like because it's what we see on TV, you know, or is some of the documentaries that I've done. You know, like people look at it like, oh man, it's bad out there. You know, when it's not. All right, anyways, let me get back to this, all right? There's a lie out there, some really um, incorrect narrative out there that says that the African people don't like African Americans. Where do you think that comes from? Yeah. I think that it's, it's a bigger thing, colonization and what have you, to keep people separated. And why do you think we believe that? Even though we, a lot of us have never really been here to know that when I say they welcome you home and you say they welcome you home, why do you think they won't take that information from people that are actually on ground, but they'll take it from someone who hasn't been here? Um, simply because it's easier to believe the negative, wow. number one. Mm -hmm. 
Number two, you're never gonna know what an experience is until you have your own experience. Anything outside your own experience is just a personal opinion. Word. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Nothing gets validated until you live it yourself. None of this was real until I got here. None of it. The way how beautifully developed it is, it's just as developed, if not more, than America. And I don't know why that was such a trip to me. <laughs> I don't even know. And I'm like, wait a minute. If we go back historically, right? America was built on the backs of Africans. The people that Period. Come here. Mm -hmm. So why would you not think that the core would not be developed? Mm. If you could come and go and uh, be taken away from your own country and just build a whole entire nation, not just any nation, because remember, America is a, a superpower. Why is America a superpower? And I have to be careful because my job, I'm political. I understand. And so I when understand. I come from things, it's never going to come from a surface. I'm always going to go deep. Word. And it's always going to be like you're in a class because I, that's what I do. Word. So it, it's, it's, it's very interesting here. Like I said, when I first got here, it was a lot of mental baggage that I had. Period. Did you know that the baggage existed or did, or did it appear when you got here and you said what I'm expecting is a computing like I was expecting one thing and I got something else so now I've got to figure out how to make this work in my head yes let me pause this real quick all right I want to keep watching it but one thing I will say is how I've gotten to watching the um the music um uh, the music and then some of the other things I've saw like I, I know it's completely different out there from from what I thought it was because I didn't really know that much, you know. So with things that I've watched and and all that, it's I know it's different. But how I say like a year ago, all this, no, I would have never have thought any of this. Like what she said about being developed, how she was like, oh, like how she's surprised. It's like. Like, why would we be surprised, you know, because we're used to it over here. But it's that 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 thought we had that man over in Africa is going to be like this, you know, just like um, I heard there were some people that told me before that. um, Like, for example, when they look at America, all they know about with America is L.A., New York and Vegas, those three spots right there. All right. Anyways, we back, guy. Right? Yes. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and when I said that, those three places, because um, the person said I was like, all they know about America, they don't know like anything else about how it looks out here and all that. Not everybody's trying to get to America. That's number one. For some reason, we think that all the they try, they try to get to America. Why they want to come over here? I don't, like, I'm like, are they really? Are they really? Are they really? I, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I've met a lot of people who are generations. I mean, real generations go back to their tribe. Word. Can tell. I mean, when it comes to their ethnicity and all of that stuff in their national, they are very clear about that. So it's very different and even with this, oh, another thing that I thought was a very negative um, narrative that we as Americans have about these people, we feel like these people are always um, trying to get over. It's not that they're trying to get over. They are natural entrepreneurs, you know? That's a good way to put it. They are natural entrepreneurs. They are the entrepreneurship, the public entrepreneur, or the private or the hidden entrepreneurship that we see on TV, on MSNBC, but we think that it's okay. I, I, I get it, right. I get it. It's the way it's presented. It's the way it's presented, as though their entrepreneurship is a hustle and they trying to get over on you. Yeah. No, that's not it at all. It's, it's very crazy. interesting. It's crazy. So since you've been here and you, and you really had the opportunity to jam pack a lot of your time, tell me about any of the new people that you've met? Have you made any connections? Do you have any friends now that you didn't have when you first got here? Do you have people that you think you might want to stay in touch with? Like, where are you in your relationship building with um, with South Africa? Okay, Africa? so before I came here, I just didn't just come on the plane, I'm going and that's it. I had made 
um, connections okay. before I got okay. here. I worked with um, the Mandela um, Fellowship okay. um, when they, he had the Yali program when President Obama had it. And so that was when he was bringing all the leaders and, and the leaders, the young leaders of Africa to America and he would put them around to all the different universities. So I was a peer collaborator and through Howard University. So I had people on the ground okay. who I had called. At the same token, my sorority is here. I reached out to those folks. I'm also in different travel groups on Facebook, and this is where I met the lovely Tasha and her <laughs> husband, Mark, you know, and they have their own traveling business and everything, the real South Africa, and we just started communicating. I think that being able to communicate and to be able to fellowship with other people who have been exposed, I realized that I wasn't as exposed as I thought that I was. Because right. people have a misconception that just because you're in the military, that you're exposed. You're in the military and you're exposed, but sometimes it's it's confined. Uh, it is con it's controlled, control so to speak. Exposure, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's a, it's I a do, controlled I do, I do. Absolutely. 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 But this time, it was getting to know different people, different people from like the Zulu tribe, them wanting to share with me their culture. I always it. say that. Yes. They want All right, now here, check this out. This is something. There's two DNA tests that I, um, the normal ancestry test, where it shows you like, like the different ethnicities you have, like and like all over the world. Like you know, it'll say stuff for Africa. It'll just be like uh, Sahara, East Africa, or West Africa. Like, those are like the three, and I forgot. I think that was it. I don't know how they broke up with Africa. But I heard they have a particular test where it's just for Africa, where you can find out what tribe you're from and all that. I was thinking about getting that. That shit's expensive, though. That's how I looked. It was like $300. I didn't have that. But I do want to do that soon. Uh -huh. They to want share, they to, want share. to share that with you. It's nothing, it's nothing that you can ask that's embarrassing or that's a dumb question, so to speak. Right. They want you to ask questions. And that's the only way that you're going to actually get to know these people is to actually build some type of relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that I saw you post tons of things about some of the food that you've eaten. Mm. I will say this. You tried ostrich. I did. Now, my take on ostrich, I'll see if you agree, it looks like chicken, but has the consistency of steak. Steak, what exactly. I thought that it would taste like chicken because it's a bird. It was like, I told my uncle, he said, oh, that doesn't look like it would be good. I said, this tastes like steak with a different type of exactly, marinade on it. Exactly. exactly. It's weird. Your brain is like, looks like chicken, has consistency of steak. It's red meat, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, what else have you had? God, what else have I had? I've had antelope. Yeah. And I hate to, to show forth my ignorance, but there's animals here that we don't even know. Of course. That I, I can't even, I don't even, I can't even say what all the stuff that I was eating. But you did guys, you, but, but have I was, you had any bad dishes? I haven't had anything bad. Everything was good, Oh, and right? let's talk about their drinks. Okay. Oh, we're, let's talk They're, about the drinks. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about the drinks. Let's talk about the drinks, because if there's one thing we do, we find the happy hour. I promise you that. The interesting thing about their drinks is that they put the right amount of alcohol, but you can't taste it. Oh, it's so good. it's like it hits you later You're on. Like, like, oh, wait, oh a minute. wait a minute. Maybe I shouldn't have had two of those. And they put so much attention into it. Sometimes it's that sound like edible up fruit, and it will even sometimes have vegetables in there, or like cucumbers. Cucumbers. <laughs> cucumbers. Yeah, I had a and exactly. a drink one time. One of my drinks had a frozen popsicle that was all strawberries. Yes. In yes. It. So it's just, they're very creative Absolutely. and everything is used. Everything is used in terms of all, all the, the agriculture and all that type of stuff. Nothing goes racist. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's very interesting. Absolutely. So of all of your days here, I think today is your, I don't know, what is this, my sixth day? No, but is it your last this day? It's my last day. It's your last day. And I'm really trying to process this, if I'm really going to get on this plane tonight. Um, one of the things I have to say about being here is like, because this this is ours. No okay. matter how you try to flip it, how to make how to make you think it's not for you. This is ours. This is ours. It doesn't matter. So there also comes like when you come here, 
it's not just all about you anymore. No, no. It's about a social responsibility. Mm -hmm. And let me back this up because there's another misconception that these are poor people and we gotta come over here and teach them how to be civilized and we gotta, no, 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 no. I'm gonna be honest with you. Please I do. mean, I don't know everybody's bank account over here and I'm not saying, cause you know, whatever your Bible or your holy book says that you'll, the poor you'll have with you always. Okay. I am saying that there's just an economic game here. There is not just an economic game, but the, your gifts and your talents that you have in America it's a whole lot easier for them to shine here. It's a whole, you feel like there's an internal thing, like mm -hmm. you want to give back to Mama Africa. Right, right. This is yours. Um, the whole trip, it's messed up my whole traveling itinerary. It really has. What do I look like running off to Europe? <laughs> Not to say anything's wrong. I with understand, that. I and understand. I believe that everybody from all over the diaspora needs to come here, regardless to where you're from. Yeah. You gotta come. It's in the air here. It's in the air. The freedom, um, the liberty, the liberty to be yourself mm -hmm. without a European standard set to it. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's very different. It's very, very different. All the things that we do in America as black Americans, mm -hmm. just to, I guess, let the general public know that we're not someone that needs to be feared, Word. that you can trust us, and right. that we're not ghetto, and da -da -da. Right. I didn't feel like that here. Mm -hmm. I don't have to prove to anybody anything. anything. They just like you as you are. They like you who as you are. Your gifts and your talents, your accomplishments, I felt like, like in America, they belittle it. Nothing is ever enough. I know many of us African American <laughs> people. Oh. We got tons of bachelor's degrees. We got tons multiple of master's degrees. Master's master's degrees. Degree. Keep you going got, back to school. Go back to school so you can get accepted. Yes, it's always so like you, you got accepted. one more qualification. You're never 100% <laughs> together. You don't always have, you're not ever ready 100%. Here it's like come as, as you, you are. are. This is your With real church. What you have. This is your real church. This is real church. This is beyond. I don't even feel right calling it church. church. Okay. It's, it's, it's bigger than that. It's, it's bigger, bigger than, that. than that. It's bigger than that. And so I just feel like you know, not even I feel like I know. There's yeah. no feeling in it. It's There's just, just I know. This will not be my last time. I have to see other countries. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Yes, I have to go to political because that's who I am. Word. Mm. This has made me look at colonization differently. I always thought it was just African Americans that were messed up by it. Nope. Nope. And nope again. One more time. Okay. Everybody. Okay. White supremacy, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. I think one of the biggest things that has happened when it comes to white supremacy and when it comes to colonization, they've done good job with keeping us distant from each, each other. other. Absolutely. They did a good job. job. Let me system. tell you how deep that system was. They come over here to Africa and they colonize it, all right? Something that wasn't theirs anyway. Word. They take a portion of us over here to these Americas or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? But then years and years ago, African Americans can't afford to come back here. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a trip. What you mean you can't afford to that's come? Planned. And it's true. That's it's planned. planned. You can't afford to go home. Why is it that Groupon doesn't have coupons in South Africa, Ghana, Ma, you know, Morocco, what Ethiopia, you? but they got tons of them to go to, to London. They got tons of them to Bahamas. You can go to Miami. You could go to Las Vegas. Keep naming I them. just don't understand. Keep naming them. <laughs> Keep naming them. Keep naming them. It's just ridiculous. Um, Cancun oh, is one of them. Go, we all go to Cancun. Okay, which is another one? We love a cruise ship. We love a cruise ship. And that's another big uh-uh. When you travel to these countries, you don't travel to Africa to just sit at a resort. No. No. <laughs> no. They have resorts here. And they're beautiful. They are beautiful. But do I want to stay in them all day? No, nah, you want to get out there and see what's actually here. And because you've been able to see the food, the culture, the colonization, and not just from the standpoint that you say white supremacy, it's a system. If, if, they, can keep, if, if they can keep us 
from coming over here to get with our counterparts, brothers and sisters, then they continue to win. They continue to win. There's so. empowerment with knowing who you are. Absolutely. There's empowerment. Absolutely. And I even have to say, even with the white supremacy and the colonization here within the continent, the one thing that tripped me out the most is that these people are not allowed to move amongst the countries as they feel like. So imagine in America, we have all these states, mm -hmm. right? And I live in Kentucky. Right. I could get in my car, go to Tennessee. Jump across state I line. could go to Georgia, to Atlanta. I'd mm -hmm. go right across. Mm -hmm. Here, it's not easy. Do you know that it is cheaper to take a flight to London and then come back to some other country in Africa than it is just to go from one country to another in Africa? Because they got to keep you. They trying to keep us controlled. They don't want you to be unified. They don't want you to have conversations of good ideas. They don't want you to have out of the box thinking. They got us. <laughs> so here's where we noticed when we went to meetings uh, Africa 2019 mm. that all of the countries on the continent basically are having the same conversation that you just came with on your own which is let's make it easy for all the countries on this continent to keep the money on the continent because it doesn't make sense that it cost me too much money to get to Rwanda. I should be able to enjoy Rwanda because I'm in Africa. I was surprised that a lot of people that are here, like um, right now we're in South Africa, there have been people who've never been to Ghana. Exactly. That's exactly. It's interesting. But they're trying to change all of that as a continent because they understand that their power really is in their unification. So you're, so they're, they're thinking the same thing that you are and they're asking for diaspora, no matter where they are in Northern America, no matter what part of the world they're from, to just come back here and kind of get your feet on the ground like you did and and see what it feels like. Because I, we've been trying to come up with the words to describe what it's like, and there are no words. There, there are no words. I'm trying to think of a word. There Authenticity, are no words. maybe? Liberty? I, I, I don't know. I, I just I don't I, have the words. All I know <laughs> is that you don't know what's sitting on you until you get here and it dissipates. It'll return as soon as you get back on the plane and have to. I dread it. I dread it. You know, um, being here has also been a spiritual journey, a part of my absolutely, spiritual journey. Absolutely. For so long, you know, I've had people to try to tell me who I am, what I need to do, how to do it, how to do it all this stuff and the great thing about my spiritual journey is that you know the creator allowed me to come here mm -hmm. if you want to know who you are you better go all the way back to your roots i don't care what's happened historically mm -hmm. forget the lies mm -hmm. forget the misconception it is necessary it is necessary um you said one thing about people are doing businesses with one another and they do accept you and what have mm -hmm. you since you've been here, the thing that I want to ask you, uh -huh. is there any type of mindset or any type of heart work that we as African Americans need to do before we get here? What, what we, do you think? What we always tell people, and it sounds cliche, but we ask people to check their American at customs. Check it there. Because you're going to come over here not on purpose but you're going to come over here subconsciously with a caucasian or european mindset believing already that you're better than the people on ground mm. leave that there mm. leave that there leave your ego all that at customs mm. and come stripped of all your titles just come mm. they will accept you as you are and they will be willing to point you in directions that you would have never been able to get pointed in otherwise they will show you, they will guide you, they will accept you, they will welcome you, they will help you. Simply because you took the courage to just come back. How many times have you heard someone say, welcome home? That's all, let me tell you something. That is all I've been hearing. This hello, where are welcome. you from? from America? Welcome, welcome home. home. <laughs> and it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. In my heart of hearts, I do feel like this is home. I don't know which country exactly where my family comes doesn't matter, from. I don't think. I guess it doesn't. But it's just, I feel like this is home. 
I have not, you know, gave up any type of allegiance to America. I understand. But I'm looking at it different now. Mm -hmm. It's the place that I dwell. It's the place that I dwell. Catch the words. The place that I dwell. But this is home. And it feels like it. It's a feeling that feels you... feels like it. It's a feeling that you can't put into words. It's a feeling that you didn't know you needed to feel. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sense of peace, for lack of a better term. I think it's very, very peaceful. So I would say, lastly, what is the real South Africa to you? The real South Africa is real identification of self for me. Word. That's what the real mm -hmm. South Africa is for me. You got to know who you are. And if you don't know, if you're on that journey trying to figure out you know, who you are, where you are, where you come from. You don't have to do your DNA ancestry. You can, it's fine if you wanna do that. We encourage you to just come to South Africa, have your own story, make your own history, and at the same time, visit us along the way. We'd Absolutely. love to hear your experiences. And you can always find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on our YouTube channel. So we hope to see you soon. 2019 just started, don't miss out. It's good. I enjoyed it. I already wanted to go out there a lot, but I like that though.